Hi, I'm Mike Kanberger with Tricky Fast Studios. Today, I'm going to continue talking about interactive objects in Cat RPG Builder, and this video is going to focus on doors. By the end of this video, you should be able to add a new door, set it up with the door behavior, open and close it, and add a lock with a key. So, to get started, we have this level that I've created. It's pretty basic. It has a player that's a set in first person mode with a camera. And that's really it. So the first thing we want to do is just make something to hold our door here. And then I've created this prefab here, door one, that just has an animated door in it. We have this animator attached to it uh, so that we can we can animate it to slide up and down. Obviously, you can do whatever animation you want to do. Um, and then the door holder here. Let's let's move it down so this thing's right on the floor. Now this is a pretty big door. Let's move it. Let's flush over there, and let's add another cube just got added somewhere uh, where did my cube go oh there it is all right so let's So we're going to just move this cube. What happened to our cube? Why is it so small? Try this again. Move the cube down. Oh, let's actually move it right here. So we want to make the cube really tall. Uh, Ten. Nope. Oh, let's see how big is this one. That's twenty. Okay, so we'll make our cube twenty tall and ten Z. There we go. And then we'll just move our door in a little bit so that it matches there. All right. Eh, good enough. We get a little room back there. So the first thing we want to do on our door is add a state machine. And then we want to add the door behavior. So if we remember, behaviors are, are actions that are just even higher level than normal actions. So this behavior is going to handle everything that the door can do. If you watch the video on chests, you can see that most of these options are the same. There's a whole section in here that's a little different that we'll cover in a minute. Um, but, you know, first we have the target to the door. We have a required key name, whether we destroy the key when we use it. Uh, is open only, works exactly like the chest. Whether it's open currently, whether it's locked currently. Uh, whether we want to unlock it permanently when the key is used. Now, here's the door door related, th related things. We can actually have it transplant, uh, transport the player to a destination scene if we want. Um, and we can either have that be a single or additive. So we can add that in there. We can even save the load progress so we can have a progress bar up if we want. Uh, if we're using the area and realm services, we can enter an area ID or a realm ID here. And that will use those uh, to, to transport the player. Or we can, uh, you know, if we're using either one of those, we can also specify a destination door. So once it loads that new area, what door is it going to put the player at? And then uh, an open and close animation trigger. So for that, 
we want to take a look here at our animator and just open that up. So what are our parameters? We have open and close. So open animation is open, close is close. Pretty straightforward. Animation target is going to be owner. Close collider target. So we can actually add a uh, collider uh, to this that when it's closed, it will activate it. Uh, we don't need to do that right now. Uh, conditional, so if we had conditions underneath it, we could add a sound to opening and closing it. Uh, you know, we can add a locked sound. We're not going to do that right now. So the next thing we need to do is make it so that the player can actually interact with this, and that means adding an interaction manager. And we also are going to need to add an interaction service. So we want a new services interaction service. We've added our interaction manager. We're going to set this max mouse interaction distance to be really high so that we can interact from, from pretty much anywhere. We don't want to show that. Uh, interact, yep. Okay. Uh, so now we need to add an interaction. So right click cat um, door interaction. So let's look at that interaction type. We could create that. I don't think we need to. Evaluation requirement. Um, animation sound. We don't need to set any of that. Okay. That should be it for our door. Let's give it a try. Okay. Let's walk over there. Click on the door. It goes up. We can walk into the room. Let's not step on that teleporter. Close the door. Now we're in the room. Good thing we have a teleporter so we can get back out. I mean, we could have just opened the door again. Open. Close. All right. So same with, with the chest. If we set it to is open only, we can only open the door. We'll never be able to close it again. So let's go over to the door here. You can open it. Can't close it anymore. So next thing we can do is add a key. So the way to do that, first thing we want to do is add an inventory service. And then the player is going to need inventory manager. And we're going to make sure we auto expand bags, stack stackables, and then we have a key prefab somewhere. Uh, to, to, to do a key pickup, perfect. That should work. Okay, so we have this little key pickup. We're going to put that there. So now we're going to go over to our inventory service, available items. We want to add our key inventory item. Now. Let's go back to our door behavior and let's call it key, key inventory item. We're going to set it locked and we'll just start with that. So, give that a try. I'm not going to pick up the key just yet. I come over here. Can't open the door, it's locked. Notice the interaction isn't even active. So now I pick up the key. And now it opens. And we can close it, open it, you know, because we have the key. All right, so next up, Let's make it destroy the key on use. We should probably also unlock when key is used. How about that? So once again, let's come over here. Doesn't open. Grab the key. Nope. 
opens now. The key's gone because we had um, destroy key on use and it's it's unlocked. You can see is locked is off. So we can open and close it. And that's that's it for that. Now, if we wanted to try this hiding a destination scene, we could do that. So, first thing we want to do is save this scene. So we'll call this door scene. All right, so then we want to, let's save this scene as Door scene two. Okay, so this is the other door scene. Let's uh, change this up a bit, right? Let's. I don't know. We can just make this an empty scene. Which is all right, get rid of all that stuff. So we should be able to tell. And we probably don't want that teleporter there. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's move this door way over to the other side. All right, there we go. I have no idea if this is going to work. Let's save this. So let's go back to our other scene here. Door scene regular. So let's open up our door holder here. Door behavior. Destination scene is door scene two. Mode single, yes. That's good. Uh, destination door named door holder. Uh, we'll call it door door one. Uh, so that should work. And animation target, yeah. Cool, let's save that scene. We gotta just also gonna add this scene to our build settings. Good. Go to our other scene here. Yep, add that scene to our build settings. While we're here, so did we leave a key in this scene? We did. Good. So this door behavior, we don't need that anymore. Uh, key inventory destination scene is door scene one. Oops. Just door scene. And then destination door is named door one. Let's save this. Go back to the regular door scene. See what happens. So we need to pick up the key. Do this. And now we're in the other scene. Oh, I see. Our player. There was a player in both scenes. Oh, that's. Oh, we don't have the key. <laughs> up the key. Yep. So since there's a player in both scenes, we're just resetting to that player's position. So I think on the player, we can add a action here. 
don't destroy on load. Do that. So that always happens. Um, let's see if that. Go to door scene two. Get rid of the player there. Let's see if that. Back to door scene one. All right, one thing we're going to want to do is for the destination door, we're going to want to set an offset. And for this one, let's set the offset to be negative 2z and door one yep negative 8y so that we're just on the ground basically so save that come back over here door scene two oops I think we did that wrong actually we want this to be positive too because this is the offset from the door in the other scene so we want it to be in front of the door in the other scene all right so let's save that Go back to door scene two, and this one is going to be destination door at an offset. So we're going to do negative eight again, and then negative two for this because this is the door in the other scene. And let's give that a save. Go back to regular door scene, give it a try. up the key over here use the door and we're in front of this other door go back this way oops we need to pick up the key again I love this lift that's going to nowhere uh, pick up the key I'm over here click on the door and we're over here now perfect well, that about wraps it up for doors. In this video, you should have learned how to create a door, add a door behavior to it that allows you to open and close it via an interaction, lock it, set up a key that will open it and unlock it, and then also use the door to transport the player to a different scene. I hope you found this video informative and useful. Let us know in the comments if there are other videos or tutorials you'd like to see. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on social media for the latest videos and other news. For more information on CAT or CAT RPG Builder and how they can help you build and prototype RPGs faster, please visit catgamebuilder.com. I'm Mike Kenverger with TrickyFast Studios. Thanks for watching.